All right, going to do another video here on exposing this liar for the hypocrite that he is. In this uh, fourth part of his your responsibility to the church, um, he actually attacks Oliver Cromwell. I have a big issue with that. Okay, um, for those of you who don't know, I named my son, my firstborn son, after Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell was a great man. Was he perfect? No, he wasn't perfect. But what Oliver Cromwell did is he went out and he stopped the open Roman Catholic slaughtering of Protestants in Europe. He was the one that put fear into the heart of the Pope. He was a great soldier, a great warrior for the Lord. Right? Um, he was not building a kingdom like this liar says about him. He was not trying to overtake the whole world and become his own version of a pope or something like this. No, he was just going out and saying the Catholic slaughtering of Protestant Christians needs to stop now. And that's what the Lord helped Oliver Cromwell to do. All right. So we're going to pick up here in part four of this lying devil, MacArthur. We're going to pick up in part four here. And uh, we're, he, he starts, you know, he's just been talking about how Jesus said about that his kingdom is not of this world and his servants aren't going to fight and everything. And uh, of course, you know, Jesus Christ's servants will eventually be coming back with him. Christians are going to be coming back and Jesus Christ himself is going to bring war. So it's not that Jesus is never going to fight and he's not going to have a kingdom on this earth. No, he will have a kingdom. But it's not yet because the Jews rejected Jesus as their Messiah. So I need to say that just to kind of set the stage here. But listen to what he says about Cromwell. And I'm going to say this too. Roman Catholics hate Oliver Cromwell. Okay, King Charles II. I'll tell the story about Oliver Cromwell here in just a little bit, but if you don't know. King Charles II came back to England. He was exiled during the time of Cromwell and the members of Parliament. When he came back, he d dug up the dead body of Oliver Cromwell and publicly beheaded him, and then they took Oliver's decapitated head and stuck it on a, on a spike up on top of one of the buildings. I forget which one it was in England. And... You know, the, the body was basically taken and shipped around and everything else. And finally the body, or the head, was buried with the body, I think in like the 1960s or something. And Cromwell died in the mid-1600s. So we're talking some, uh, well, I should say mid to late 1600s. But we're talking some very, very sick stuff. And uh, I'll say more on that in just a little bit. But listen to what this liar says about Cromwell. Very important point. The church is the spiritual kingdom of Christ on earth today, and it has nothing to do with earthly kingdoms. My kingdom, the church, is not of this world. So we don't fight. We don't go with Cromwell and the Protestants to Ireland and kill the Catholics. We don't do that. We don't fight. We don't go with Cromwell to, to Ireland to kill Catholics. Um, he wasn't going there to set up a kingdom. He was defending his realm, number one, because the Catholics were trying to get back in. That's what they did with King Charles I's wife, his Catholic wife. I'll tell that story here in just a minute. But Cromwell was not trying to build a kingdom. He was merely trying to defend the realm of England and also stop the Catholic killing, the Catholic slaughtering of Protestants. That's what he was trying to do. Let me show you here real quickly. This is a whole thing here about Oliver Cromwell. Um, essentially, I'll tell you this story without going into a big thing on it. Uh, you can see some documentaries on the man, whatever else. Cromwell was born in the during the reign of King James I. Okay, where our King James Bible comes from. That time period. Oliver Cromwell was born. He was a Puritan and basically he became a member of Parliament he was like a lord, I, I believe. Uh, he was, so he was kind of somewhat, you know, I shouldn't say royalty, but he was, you know, higher in, in civilization. You know, he wasn't just a peasant, in other words. And uh, he was a member of parliament. And essentially, King James I had passed a decree whereby no future king or queen could be a Roman Catholic. So what does his son, King Charles I, do? He goes and he marries the Roman Catholic princess of France. And so now she basically control the marriages, most Catholic marriages go, and she starts to bring Roman Catholic stuff back in, 
Um, there's problems there between the members of parliament and the king, the royalists that supported the king. And the king, they went to war. They had the English Civil War. The king basically starts to look for help from the Irish Roman Catholic armies. And when it was found out, he was convicted of high treason and he was beheaded by the members of parliament. And uh, then Oliver Cromwell was set up as Lord Protector. He refused the title of king. He said, Christ not man is king. And he took up the title Lord Protector and they waged war upon Roman Catholic army strongholds and pushed them out of countries where they were killing Christians. And they just went to Ireland, they pushed the Catholics out, they went up, I think, to the Netherlands and Denmark, and they were like just shoving the Catholics out. The French Huguenots in you know that were over there in France, uh, they were Christians, and you know, these Catholic armies were just torturing and, and murdering them, raping the women and everything. Um, they've done that for a thousand, you know, a long, long time. And um Cromwell basically sent letters to the King of France and said, stop it now or I'm coming on, you know, I'm going to come and invade France. You know, stop killing Christians. And, you know, he didn't invade France. Why? Because the king said, okay, yeah, back off on the Huguenots. Okay, don't persecute them. I mean, he was a great man. Cromwell never lost a battle. He was one of the only three men that have held that distinction. Joshua, David, Oliver Cromwell. Okay, he was a great man. That's why I named my son after him. I want my son to aspire to such levels of greatness. Uh, but the whole point is, here's another one of the massacres, just a thing that happened back in 1572, the massacre of St. Bartholomew's Day. This is Encyclopedia Britannica. So, I mean, thousands and thousands of Protestants were being slaughtered by the Roman Catholic armies. Cromwell put an end to that. And Cromwell also, one of the other big things he believed in and taught was liberty of conscience. Okay, as long as you're not going to kill other people and do whatever, you can worship God however you want. He did not outlaw Roman Catholicism, even in England, after he was in power. It's just they were supposed to do their thing in private. All right. A lot of the Constitution, Roger Williams, he also held to liberty of conscience. A lot of the, the freedom of religion and things here in America came from Cromwell and uh, Roger Williams. A lot of these guys, they had that belief, right? We don't want Roman Catholicism coming in as the only system and whatever else. But if you want to be a Roman Catholic and peacefully worship, fine. And I still hold to that today. I'm not going to uh, forcibly tell, come up to a Catholic and say, you will become a Bible believer, King James Bible believer. I'll kill you. Of course not. Of course not. I'm not going to force my beliefs on a Roman Catholic at the point of death. Okay, I'll witness to them, all right, and I'm going to offend them and whatever else. But I love Roman Catholic people, all right. I don't hate Roman Catholics, but if I find out that they start killing people in the area, I'm going to take up arms and I'm going to go and I'm going to stop that murdering. That's all Cromwell did. So for John MacArthur to lie about him and say he was going out to build a kingdom, he's a liar. It's just disgusting to me. But here's the interesting thing. We're, we don't fight. The church doesn't fight. But let, listen to what he says at the 11 minutes and 20 seconds, right around there. Let's listen to this. Okay? Same sermon. Before he talks about Cromwell. We don't go with Cromwell. We don't fight. The church doesn't fight. Listen to what he says. Death cannot stop the church doesn't stop the church. The church alive on earth is the church militant. The church alive in heaven is the church triumphant. What? The church on earth is the church militant? Do a Google search for the church militant. Church militant. Church militant serving Catholics. It's a Catholic term. There's nowhere in your King James Bible where the church is called the church militant. Nowhere. It's a Roman Catholic term. See, Roman Catholicism teaches that they have the spiritual and the temporal swords. The spiritual is they believe that they control the Bible, sacred scripture. The temporal is that they control all the armies of the world. All armies, all governments are subservient or supposed to be subservient to the Pope of Rome. And most countries are allowed to do their thing as long as they come and submit to the Pope. That's why you always see world leaders coming and meeting with the Pope. I mean, who cares about the Pope? 
you know, but they come and they submit to him. And if one of them gets out of line, starts getting a little bit too greedy for that money or whatever, through the drug industry or whatever else they have oil or whatever, all of a sudden there's a war, a crusade. Sure, absolutely. But check this out. Look down here. The Vortex Church Militant, uh, you know, churches militant, penitent, and triumphant. Top stories. Jesuit pushes false link between President Trump advisor and church militant. I didn't write that. Okay, everybody's, oh, you think the Jesuits are behind? Right there. What do you do with that? So I find it quite hypocritical that, oh, well, you know, the church doesn't fight. The church doesn't go to war. And yet he uses the term that we are the church militant, just like a faithful Catholic will do. Kind of weird, isn't it? 